Genomics is at the forefront of medical advancements to tackle big league illnesses like cancer and heart disease. The question is, which ETFs are best positioned to capture this investment trend? Well, today's battle is between ARK and Global X. Stick around. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. Genomics is a newer term within the biopharmaceutical field that describes a study of a person's genes known as the genome. And it's this genome that includes interaction of your genes with each other, plus with your environment. And genomics is being used to tackle illnesses like heart disease, asthma, diabetes, and cancer, because these diseases are not typically caused by uh, your genes alone, but rather a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Now, genomics offers new possibilities that are quite promising for therapies and treatments for many of these complex diseases. So today's matchup features the Global X Genomics and Biotech ETF Genom going up against ARC Genomic Revolution ETF, that's ARC-G. Now, Genom is index linked, whereas ARC-G is actively managed. So who wins the battle? Well, you're about to find out. Helping us to judge today's matchup is Dave Krinces with ETF Portfolio Management and Cynthia Murphy with ETF.com. Cynthia and Dave, welcome to the program. Great to see you. Hey, Ron. Hey, Dave. Thanks for having me again. Let's do it. Hey, Ron, Cynthia. Nice to see you guys. So we got our four battle categories, cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and mystery. For our mystery, that's where you, the judges, get to pick that single factor or multiple factors that you think are crucial to today's matchup. It may determine which of these ETFs prevails. And of course, you can also nominate wildcard ETFs. I have a feeling we might see some of those on today's program, but we'll have to wait and see. So my battle scorecard is ready. We're going to start with our first category, which is cost. Cynthia, please get us started. So in general, you know, if you know anything about me, you know, I always love the lowest cost option. So at face value, that would be Genome versus RKG um, because it's about 25 basis points cheaper. That said, I actually think ARCG is a good price for an actively managed fund. It's a Kathy Wood fund. So I think, you know, it, it's more tradable. It trades at tighter spreads usually because it has more volume. So I actually think this is a split category to begin with. I think they're both kind of on on same level of a value proposition here. Thank you, Cynthia. That's a strong start. Dave, shift to you. How do you see it in terms of cost? Do you agree with Cynthia's analysis? Well, this genomics battle could definitely use some wild cards. I, I hope Cynthia brought some. Um, on cost, genome is cheaper on an absolute basis which is what you would expect since genome is passive while ArcG is actively managed. Still, for these aggressive growth funds, cost is not a material factor, but I'll give the cost win to genome. Thank you, Dave. That takes us to exposure strategy, our next category. You're still up, Dave, so how do you see it? I do not have a strong preference on these two funds at ETFPM. We're not trading either of these funds, so, I'll call it a Ron DeLegge favorite split decision. So you're going to blame me for the split decisions. <laughs> Your split decision, not mine. Okay, I got you down, though, for split decision. Thank you very much, Dave, and uh, assist to you on that one. Next up is uh, Cynthia. How do you see it in terms of exposure strategy between these two ETFs? Yeah, I actually think, you know, both funds do a great job capturing the space, but I do think Genome has a little bit bigger portfolio, has almost 20 holdings more, and it tends to tilt a lot smaller cap, so it gets some of the really cutting edge genomics names in there. I love this index behind the CTF because it uses this screen, which is a revenue screen. So all the holdings in this portfolio have to get at least 50% of the revenues from direct exposure to the genomics theme. So I, I just love that about this fund where ArcG, you know, it's, it's an active fund. It can go a little more anywhere, has a little bit of a broader mandate because it's more companies that benefit from genomics revolution. So it's a little bit of a broader take. So I like genomes uh, exposure a little bit better. 
Very good. I got you down for genome on exposure strategy. That takes us next to performance. So Cynthia, how do you see it between these two ETFs shaken down? It really depends on time frame. If you look in the past 12 months, uh, ARC G left uh, genome in the dust, um, as most ARC funds did, leave everybody else in the dust. So it's been a really successful growth play. Uh, but here to date, actually, genome has held itself better. Uh, a lot of these active ETFs saw a big correction. So it really is a time frame issue. Um, I we can't go split again. It's too many splits in one battle. So I'm going to focus on um, one year performance and I'm going to give it to ArcG. All right. I got you down for ArcG with that disclaimer, one year performance. Of course, like you said, depends on what the time frame is. Mm -hmm. And that's very important for our audience to understand when it comes to performance. Also, performance obviously is historical in nature. Mm -hmm. It does not in any way predict the future. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Dave, we shift to you in terms of performance. How do you see it? On performance, over the trailing 17 months from January 20 through mid-May 21, ArcG has outperformed genome, but it's wildcard time. For aggressive growth, we prefer the NASDAQ 100 three times in addition to the top cryptocurrency trusts. It's interesting to see that Bitcoin Trust gave you more than double ARC, while Ethereum Trust delivered six times ARCG. But these wild cards are far more volatile. And we'll, with all the volatility and headlines, Ethereum is still a top trend with the fast moving performance discount. So the performance win for aggressive growth easily goes to wildcard fund ETHE. And in its absence here, I'll give the nod to ArcG. Okay, thank you very much, Dave. We appreciate that. And Cynthia, next up is our mystery category. You're gonna give, give that to us. What is your mystery category and who wins it? So just to clarify, wildcard can be like completely <laughs> off left field, like not even related to what we're talking about. Is that the message here? Absolutely. Well, they're all what, aggressive growth. What, with the emphasis on wild, which, which basically encompasses everything. I like I'm speechless. I got no comeback to that wild card. So we'll just let it sit there and stew for a little bit. Uh, so my Mr. Category, because these are, yes, they're aggressive growth, but I think of them as kind of very specific thematic plays. So I'm going to go with um, thematic purity, if you will. Uh, and so basically how they are building these portfolios, which, you know, based when we talk about exposure, I'm going to give it to Genome. I really like the revenue screens. I really like the specificity that these companies have to be involved with one of five industries related directly to gene editing, uh, genomic research. Whereas, you know, if you look at ArcG, the biggest holding in that portfolio is Teladoc, which is a telemedicine company, like a software uh, remote medicine ETF, um, firm. So it's not even related to genomic revolution in any way. So I'm gonna go with thematic purity and I'm gonna give it to Genome. Very good, Dave. Your mystery battle category, what is it and who wins it? Well, as usual, my mystery category is position weighting because it's far more important than people realize. And it can be mysterious. But as I mentioned, our position size for these genomic ETFs is zero, while we target 2 to 25% in the top crypto trusts. So for this battle, I call the position size a goose egg split decision. All right. Thank you very much, Dave. Now we have moved to the part of the program that gives our judges that final opportunity to weigh in on their overall winner. Dave, you're still up. Ron, to recap this genomic battle, ETFPM doesn't allocate to either of these funds because they're just not hot enough. Our investment discipline is trend following, so we follow relative price momentum. If we're going to deviate from leading index ETFs, it would be for much stronger relative performance. The Ethereum Trust delivered seven times the return of TQQQ. So wildcard ETHE is my preference for aggressive growth. And between these genomic funds, I'll give the win to ArcG. Thank you, Dave. I've got you down for ArcG. And uh, of course, your wildcard ETHE as your preferred winner. And uh, Cynthia, your last opportunity, give it to us. 
Yes, outside of ETHE, which apparently applies to every battle, um, I, um, I'm actually, I think I'm split decision on this one. Um, I like, I like the exposure better on genome. I like the purity. I like the screens. I like the predictability because it's an index ETF versus an active management managed ETF. But at the same time, you know, it doesn't have the glitter of Kathy Wood. It doesn't have, you know, that uh, shocking performance we tend to see with with uh, Kathy's funds. So I'm gonna go split decision, which I hate to do, but I think it's the honest answer. Well, Ron loves those. Yeah, well, thank you very much. And according to my battle scorecard, this is a split decision with uh, with both judges giving us their takes. Obviously, they had different takes in each category. You guys agreed on performance for the most part, but uh, clearly Dave uh, is in favor of his wild card favorite, ETHE. And as he mentioned, his, his uh, philosophy towards investing doesn't have any allocation to either of these two ETFs. On the other hand, Cynthia, uh, in some instances, favored ARC-G for its active management bent. At the same time, GNOM has, uh, as she pointed out, more holdings, smaller companies, and uh, also it had um, uh, an overall thematic purity that she preferred. So again, um, this was a split decision on many uh, levels. Uh, I, if it were my money and I was investing in this particular category, I think my money would probably go on GNOM just because of its that thematic purity. And I, for all of the greatness that uh, Kathy Wood has brought to active management, I think GNOM for me, that style purity, that's what I'm looking for if I'm investing in an area like this. Nevertheless, what we've given you, I think is an excellent starting point for investing in this particular space. This is an emerging space within biotech genomics. It's gonna only get bigger. And so keep your eye out on these particular ETFs, ARC-G and GNOM, and uh, be sure to tune in to ETF Battles. Our next episode is coming up. Give us your ticker symbol requests. Which battles would you like to see? Drop us a line in our comment section below. You can also hit us up on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. A warm thanks to Dave and Cynthia for another outstanding job at judging today's battle matchup. Well done. Always fun. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Great to see you. I'm Ron Legge with ETF Guide TV. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.